Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. All right. And it's number 91. No, it's 90. Is it 90? 90. It's 90. (laughs) Tech talk number 90. If you can believe it. Let's just shoot them both and get them out of the way. 90 and 91, back to back. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Yeah, no. If you can imagine, there's 90 hours of us just talking like this. Yeah, you guys just eat it up every time. Can somebody do a super cut on YouTube? What, how, what's the maximum length of time you can make a video? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I know it's it's kind of limited on Facebook, but on t- no, who knows? Can't, Twelve. Wait, how how short do they have to be on TikTok? They can't be a certain length. Anyway. Fifteen seconds or more. All right, it's time for tech talk. Let's get out of this and get talking about tech right now. <laughs> Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, greetings, everyone, in the voiceover world. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B-S. B.S. Tech Talk. 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 Talking tech. Interesting weekend. I was at Mavo last weekend and met all sorts of people. We had a great time. I like the, the small conference. The yeah. big ones, eh, you can go to those, but you're going to feel like a, a grain of sand on a large beach. Mm-hmm. And this one, you're more like... You know, you're, you're a pattern in a rug. <laughs> was there any <laughs> tech talking going on? With, who... I, with me, I had, yeah. I was the only person talking tech. Mm-hmm. You know, Uncle Roy was there, but he didn't really, he was just. He, he was, was in running. support, right? Yeah, he was support. But I, you know, I got to talk uh, my thing with, uh, with about 20 people. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've been doing these sessions for, for many, many years. And you and I have done them together, which are always a riot. I'm, the first one we did at the voice conference in, uh, at, uh, in Anaheim where my mother was actually that's right. there. Uh, yeah, and, that's right. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Sitting right and, in the front row. Yeah. And we've, we, we've had fun doing them ever since, but I, I was at this one and people were asking good questions and oh, that's, that's good to hear. what we like to hear. So here on tech talk, you get to ask the questions. And we're here to solve them because that's what our show is all about. And why are you asking us these questions? Because when it comes to home voiceover studios, that's what, that's what George and I do. I mean, it's, it's a niche that nobody understands. Uh, and I'm, when I mean nobody, I mean the, 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 the typical how, acoustical engineers, the right major yeah. recording studio designers and owners. Right. And there's a lot of voice actors out there who say, well, I use this and I use that fine and dandy. Every I'll voice dare, is I'll even dare to say the booth, the, the booth makers don't know about well, we, how to make the booth that. sound good. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, there was a booth maker at, at Mavo last weekend, our friend, uh, Bear Cave, uh, uh, booths. Oh yeah. Bear and, Cave you know, from Canada. He's, he's making those improvements in the booths and stuff, but you know. Sometimes you, you, someone will be, you know, rehearsing in a booth and you hear them on the outside and it's like, well, if you can hear them on the outside, can you hear them on the inside? You know, mm-hmm. That sort of thing. But mm-hmm. every voice is different. Every room is different. Every situation is different. And you need ears that know how all this stuff works and how to make it sound right or make it sound what it's supposed to sound like. Mm-hmm. Whistle. And, uh, so 
if you need help with that, if you're not really knowledgeable on it, and the fact of the matter is, is you don't need to be an audio engineer to be a voice actor. If you understand the basics and your, your studio is set up right, and it gets the approval of those of us in the intense minority of the 500 billion people that live on this planet that actually understand what it's supposed to sound like, you can work <laughs> with George and I, who will make sure that if... You're re if you're auditioning, if you don't get the job, it's not because of us, because you're going to sound great no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. So if you want to work with George, where do they go? They go to... That's right, georgethe.tech, my home on the web for booking services online, uh, getting a, a sound check, really. That's probably one of the most valuable things that Dan and I do. Um, and uh, it's all over there. You can have a studio design done. You can get processing, but... Soundcheck is probably where almost everybody will benefit on some level. Absolutely. And you can work with me, too. Dan. I'll, yeah, you just come over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Visit the Specimen Collection Cup. Yeah, and, and again, it's now at the top of the page, so it's real easy to find. Uh, for 25 bucks, I will give you a very thorough analysis of your audio. It takes me five seconds well, 10, because you give me five seconds of silence, you start reading, and then I immediately know what's going on in your studio. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this for so long, we know everything that goes on. Nobody else is really concentrated in home studio audio, but George and I have. And I can hear this stuff. I can tell the shape of the room, the size of the room, what you're using for acoustical panels. Are you using acoustical panels? Are you in your living room? Are you in a booth? Are you in a quiet room? All these different things. Are you in a closet with sliding doors? Right. You know, an 18 inch closet or a 22 inch closet. You know, it's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> you know, make sure you got lots of clothes in there. But there's mm -hmm. lots of ways to make your studio sound professional because you want to be a professional and sound professional. Mm -hmm. And we want you to sound professional because if you don't sound good, everybody doesn't sound good. If you don't sound least, good, we don't look good. And, and that's most important is, <laughs> in, because... We know what it's supposed to sound like. So get in touch with us. Also, if you want to, you know, write to us here at uh, the voiceover body shop, if you've got a question, you can, you can write in anytime. And when you write in your question, it gets to the head of the queue of the questions that we answer in the second segment of our show. So that's right. Right. But you can write it in now, go into the chat room. You got a voiceover body shop, home voiceover studio tech question. Type it out, put it in the chat room, and Jeff Holman, I know, is still sitting in there going, I want some questions, and we will get those questions to in just a little bit. But right now, it's time for George's Tech Update. What have you come up with this week? I've got a couple of things. Um, one is um, just thoughts about microphone choice, and I'm seeing more and more dynamic microphones coming out. And a lot of that reason is because just like up until the last couple of years, everything was being made for music. Now this new hot market segment is podcasting. podcasting. <laughs> right? So now <laughs> all the new microphones that are being launched to market tend to be focused on podcasting. And therefore, they're using dynamic mics. And they're using dynamic mics because they are trying to get an audio or aural aesthetic that is more, I would say, closer to broadcast or radio. And so that is why dynamics are really, really taking off. Now, all that to say that you don't necessarily get a bad sound with a dynamic mic. And there are some surprisingly good sounding cheap dynamic mics out there if you get lucky. I, Behringer makes a handheld, like a, you know, SM58 style mic that's like 30 bucks. It sounds surprisingly good. Um, the thing about dynamic mics are they have pros and cons. They tend to have lower output. They need more gain. And if you add more gain, they tend to get, you tend to get noisier sound because more gain means more hiss. So you gotta be really careful about dynamic, dynamic mics. The best dynamic mics are as sensitive or nearly as sensitive as a condenser mic and also nearly as expensive or even more expensive than an affordable, good quality condenser mic. So the benefits um, can quickly be offset by the cost. I, I was just actually posted something today on the VO Tech Talk Facebook group, and it was a sample of a singer singing into a Sennheiser 
441. Not, I remember them well from my radio days. It's a really unique looking mic. It kind of looks like a phaser gun or some kind of a weapon <laughs> right. from a, you know, a, an old sci-fi, sci-fi movie. And it sounds amazing. But it's also a very expensive dynamic microphone, right? So, um, yeah. So be careful about choosing dynamics. I mean, th there are some lucky finds to be had. Sometimes they can work well. But I would still say... If you buy one, don't overinvest in it. Use it as a secret weapon or a special case microphone for specific types of reads that you're doing. Dan, it, have you found an occasion? Because I know you've got a mic locker, all kinds of stuff. Have you found an occasion or even a reason to pull out a dynamic mic? Once or twice, like if I'm asked to be a, a, a radio announcer or something mm -hmm. along those lines or something where it's I'm like a news announcer or... Uh, sometimes when I'm doing something that is like old, like mm -hmm. if they're, they want me to do like a read from the fifties or something mm -hmm. along those lines, I, yeah. I might, I might drag that out. Of course, in those situations, I drag out a ribbon mic. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You really go for it with the ribbon right, mic. Yeah. Right. I, I go for that authentic sound and, and, and it works, especially if there's a good engineer on the other end who knows exactly what it is I'm trying to get and. And that helps a lot. But yep, uh, yep. do you think they're ever going to make like an active dynamic mic like they do with active ribbon mics? Yeah, it's starting to happen. Um, um, and right now my brain's leaking up, leaking the brand that's trying to do it right now. Um, but there, there are a couple. I, I, I'm pretty sure that Aston, Aston uh, Microphones right. is doing a dyna an active dynamic mic. And, um, I've seen that in some studio singing situations as well. Again, haven't seen it or heard of it being used much in voiceover, but, um, there are some coming out and that's basically combining a line level, uh, a, a microphone booster, like a cloud lifter type device into the interior of the dynamic mic. And now you get a hotter, more sensitive dynamic mic. It's just this interesting thing. As you, as you do more things to a dynamic mic, it becomes more condenser-like, a.k.a. a lot more sensitive. And so it starts picking up more background noise in the room. So it's, it's a catch-22 uh, right. when, you're, when you're doing all this right. stuff. And that's one of the reasons some people like using a dynamic is because their, their, their environment is not optimum. And yes. So the dynamics our... tend to be able to focus in tighter on the voice and kind of reject more of the, the room sound. Right. right. But of course, if you just fix the room sound, then solves all those problems. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's all, it's all related because then if you get closer to the mic, it sounds like you're kind of doing a podcast or a broadcast and not a natural right. conversational sound. Right. So yeah. now your next thing, I will have to say, I avoided asking you about it and just went ahead and did it so you did it i was gonna say i was wondering if you did it you I, did it, it came up i did Would you it. put it on which computer both on oh, both of them wow yeah, you went so all the way all the way in i trust them i know what's going tell them what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> well you uh dan is saying he just installed mac os ventura which has only been out in a couple of weeks and um the word on the street is that it is good um, Tim Friedlander, Dan saying he's got a good experience. Tim Friedlander, who has a, a pretty complex home, you know, production studio facility with, with the Apollo hardware, Pro Tools, kind of the messiest system that anybody is probably going to have. He's had a very good luck with Ventura. So I'll say this, I'm still not installing it quite yet, but I'm tempted to because my current Mac Mini with Big Sur has some issues, clearly. Things are crashy. It's had some weird behavior and it might be time to just do a big erase and install and, and maybe go up to Man Monterey or uh, Ventura. I, I, my, I surmise that Ventura is sort of like an, a debugged Monterey. <laughs> because, I, it's probably what it is because it, yeah, yeah, it's running pretty smooth. It's got a fresh coat of paint on it. <laughs> it's got a couple of new nifty bells and whistles, which I don't care about. Um, but if it's more stable than Monterey and it runs even better, um, then it's going to, sounds like it's going to be a winner. So, you know, just stay tuned, ask folks that have similar setups to yours that have the same, use the same software and hardware before you take the plunge. Um, and of course, as always have a backup plan, have a backup, uh, of your hard drive before, 
um, upgrading. I, I would say if you're going from Monterey to Ventura, it's probably going to be a very smooth transition. If you're going from a much older OS or an older computer, I don't think I would go to Ventura. It's written to run on the modern I mean, Silicon M2, yeah. M1, M2 Max. And I don't think you're going to have quite a good experience on an Intel machine. Yeah. My, my only complaint is that it took away my screen, my, 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 uh, my desktop. Change the picture. I had a great picture of Iceland and it got rid of it. It's just gone, gone, huh? Well, I'll find it. I'll put it back. It's got to be there somewhere. But yeah, it, they tend to do that. They're like, yeah, we have a new, <laughs> you have a new OS. Get a new wallpaper. It's like, come on. No, I want my old one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, here's just a little PSA <laughs> because this came up for one of my clients. When you order an acoustical panel for your door, take into account the doorknob. <laughs> I know you would think all... that that's like totally logical we're all laughing here but i mean we had a, the room was all mapped out we knew the size of the doors everything i helped her design the room the whole thing and she's like oh no we didn't take into account the doorknob i felt so terrible so you will it, now won't you <laughs> it's a pretty small door you know i think the door is only two and a half feet wide so like a two by four panel wouldn't quite fit on there so she would need two 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 by two panels one above and one below the doorknob. But hopefully, uh, dear Aaron can go without the panel on the door. We're going to, we're going to get it all tuned and listen and see if she needs that additional panel on the door and we'll figure out what to do from there. But Hey, it just happens. Take a, take a jigsaw and just cut around it. That's oh, into the panel itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, those fabric wrap panels, those are that the downside of the fabric wrap panels. They are definitely not easy Made to modify. To right. That's the one pro of foam. Very easy to modify. Um, another thing is I bought myself a little birthday gift and I got, I finally got a stream deck oh. and I got the teeniest, tiniest little stream deck ever. What Sue. does the stream deck do? Anything you want, which is, I mean, anything your computer can do, you can, you can trigger specific things. You can um, have macros. Like I have one that says, my favorite button is start work. I walk up to my studio. I press start work. Launches spot, uh, launches not Spotify. <laughs> That'd be start radio <laughs> show. Um, <laughs> I hit start work. It launches Zoom. Um, it logs into my Zoom account. It waits about five or six seconds. And then it loads the Zoom session because there's a little delay between launching Zoom and loading the thing. You can create all a macro to do all that stuff. The thing is, and macros and scripts and all this stuff have been around forever and ever, but it's just the fact that it's got a little button labeled, literally the word start work, because you can customize the buttons. It's pretty cool. I can also have a dedicate, I have a dedicated zoom mute button right here, oh, which that's is nice. mute zoom. And the thing is, it's running a special driver in the background, so it knows which app the buttons are for. You know how with, with keyboard shortcuts, you have to have the, whatever the app the shortcut's for, it has to be the foreground app. You know what I mean? Like, if, if, if another app is actually showing as the foreground app, it's right next to the Apple logo, and it says, and, and it's right. the wrong app, the keyboard shortcut doesn't work. These are all global or, or local. Uh -huh. You can choose. Um, but it's, it's really cool. And you can map sound effects to the buttons on here and, and do the same kind of fun stuff you do with the roadcaster, um, oh. right here on the unit. Cool. Yeah. You mean stuff like, uh, you know, of course, I don't think I have it set up so you can hear it, but it's there. <laughs> of course the motor, I want to demo it. It doesn't work. Right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's a gadget. It's a gadget, no, no doubt, no doubt about it. But if you like um, a little customization and you don't like remembering keyboard shortcuts, it's pretty cool. Again, this is a mini one. They have some really big ones with a lot of buttons, and every button has a custom image that you can map to the button. Cool. Pretty fun little thing. Lastly, just a very quick plug, uadforum.com. If you are a Apollo user, go there and check out my sub forum called VoiceOver Podcasting and live streaming. It's not a super busy room there yet, but it's a laser focused one on our, on our business. And it's been helpful to the folks who have tuned in there. So if that's you, that's, I, I run that room. I check it out every day and, and answer questions. Very so good. let's talk pricey microphones. 
Yeah, Let, let's talk about expensive microphones. I mean, we were sort of talking about it before when you were talking about the dynamic mics. Um, when I was at Mavo, had a long discussion with the guys from the high-end microphone, Sennheiser and uh, Neumann. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I was wearing my Telefunken shirt, <laughs> which he was quite impressed with. The, bat the button-down one? The, the button, yeah, the wine style the, one? Yeah, 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 yeah I think the blue and orange one. Yeah, that's it. I love that shirt, and I wore it for my, my thing. But we were talking, and, you know, and, of course, if you go to conferences – and there's mic manufacturers there. And, and George and I have been to NAB and, uh, and NAM, you know, where all the manufacturers, and they're like, hey, listen to this microphone. Now, I, I, had, I had to be honest with the guy. And I'm like, do you think that people are going to be able to tell the difference in voiceover? And I think this was probably his first voiceover conference, which I think was very beneficial. Because I was able to say, he came in and he watched my, my thing on, on home voiceover studios. Mm -hmm. Because I want the manufacturers to understand what is unique to what we do. And you were talking earlier about the dynamic mics. And the and dynamic mics, things. right. They're great for singers because they can handle high SPL. And you don't have to give them as much gain when you're a singer or you got it on a... On, on, a, on a, a guitar cabinet, on a yeah, cab, I mean, as they say. You know? I've been seeing them used now. There's a lot of, there's a big trend of live studio sessions that are on YouTube, which are really cool. The, the band's really playing live. and Right. But it's a studio situation, and they are almost always putting a dynamic mic in front of the singer because it rejects a little bit of the drum sound and the other sound, sound in the room. Right, exactly. But when people audition mics, and I think we've covered this a lot over the last 11 years. We've covered everything a lot in 11 years. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But for all the new viewers out there that are like, well, how do I choose a microphone? And what's the best microphone for voiceover? When you're auditioning you know, higher-end microphones, generally, especially if you're like in a convention hall or in a, you know, in a, in a, in a vendor's, vendor's area of a, of a conference, they have them set up generally the exact opposite of the way we tell you to use a microphone, which is mm -hmm. upside down, eye level, like this, because it's going right. to capture you the way you exist and the way other people hear you. Right. But no, they always seem to have them upright. Yeah. And people are like, how do I sound in this microphone? <laughs> and, and, you know, and then I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, when you're doing this with voiceover people, you know, are they going to get a true idea of really what it's going to sound like? You know, and no. there's, you know, it's got a U87 and a 103 and a 416. You know, all mics that we would you know, would say, look, if you got a great studio, you got, you know, you have a half million dollar studio that is totally acoustically sterile and neutral, no sound coming in and there's no reverberation or it's just perfectly tuned. Yeah, you can put a $10,000 Telefunken microphone in there. That's what they're for. If you're in your closet, you got air conditioning, the dishwasher, the refrigerator. Plumbing. Your kids. I mean, all snoring these things. Snoring dogs. Snoring dogs. <laughs> We've got highways. we got all these things. It's going to pick it up. So you don't want the most sensitive mic out there. And that really is, I mean, there's a number of differences between the really high-end mics and the stuff that we generally recommend that is... You know, 150 to maybe 400 dollars tops. I mean, I mean, we will recommend a 416 if we think it's important Warranted. for you to, to have that, and you have the environment in which to use it. Uh, a 416 will help you in a somewhat nominal market. It was great having this guy in my session though, because he was like, "Well, this is what happens with this. What these are mics are for, and that's what these mics are for." You know. St had a, have a great relationship with this guy. Now he understands, you know, how his microphones fit into our marketplace. Well, he he knew enough to have a a Sennheiser four sixteen because that isn't it's not outside of voiceover. It's not a known thing. No, that you would use a shotgun mic inside a booth this close. Like that's just not right. what they were designed for, right? So right, yeah, it's a hack. Kind right. of that we're doing it that way, right? And and of course, the four sixteen is incredibly versatile because you can use it, you know, at a distance, 
and it has great pickup, and you can use it up close and direct in if you're doing like promo work and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, the live like, announce. I live. see the live announce of people doing it like this, right? Like right off the tip of the mic, right? And and it works. That's and it's a great mic for that. And it's a road warrior. It's a it's a big heavy mm-hmm. duty mic because it was designed for some guy carrying it on top of a pole and following Tom Cruise around. Mm-hmm. or Julia Roberts or somebody along those lines who mm-hmm. who all have great voices. But uh, but from a distance of more like five feet as opposed to maybe the six to ten inches that we might use with a, with a 416. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is if you're auditioning mics, you have to do it in the environment in which you are going to use it. Otherwise, you're fooling yourself. And I might also mention... There's no mic out there, whether it's a $10,000 Telefunken or something under $150. I won't mention any specific brand names. It's not going to change the way you read copy. It's all about performance. Is there some subtlety? What is the difference in these mics? And we, we talked about this a bit. I mean, what's really the difference? How would this mic be used as opposed to another mic? You know, and we came down to talking about national public radio. Well, that's the sound that they want. Oh, by mm-hmm. the way, in my new car, the stereo is even better. And listening to NPR, it's like it's like being in the studio with them. Oh, but cool. Can, it must have HD radio. Oh, it's got a super duper HD radio. Mm-hmm. But you can tell what kind of a mic they're using. Of course, I know what kind of a mic they use. But you can tell that it's just clean and crisp. And, of course, it's National Public Radio, whose standards are higher than almost anybody's. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so... Well, you were saying about the environment that you test the mic in. We, I was with uh, Rick Wasserman and Tribooth at VO Atlanta last year. Right. And I think Neumann really lucked out because they were a sponsor, and we put one of their mics up in the Tribooth. Right. And it obviously gave people a much different and much better impression of what that mic would sound like because we had it in that booth, right? And no, it wasn't soundproof, but the acoustical environment and the positioning of the mic and everything were appropriate. I did a little bit of software magic using uh, Clarity VX to remove the room noise, which was pretty good. And uh, and people had an incredibly good impression, but you're not going to get that in a typical trade show environment. Right. And here's the other thing when you're auditioning a mic. If you're listening on headphones and you're trying to satisfy, I sound great on this, you're not getting a really good impression of really what that mic sounds like. You really need to have it in the environment in which you're recording and then listen to the playback and get a much better idea because then you can listen and compare them one after another as opposed to, all right, all right, turn the gain up on this one. Let me, let me test this, this one and see how this sounds different from the other one. You know. You don't need an expensive microphone if you are, I'll qualify this, if you're just starting out. It's not going to make a difference. You can start off with a really good USB mic or a mic that's over $150 uh, to $200. I, I mean, there's some really good ones out there. I, you know, we're, we've been recommending the, the Rode NT, uh, the NT1, the... Um, Audio Technica 2035, 20, still 30, one of my classic five, favorites. You know, still, I, I still have VO1A, my VO1A, if you got a little bit more. Right. And, and they're all, they capture you as you exist. And that's all that matters. So yep. that's, that's my take on expensive microphones. So take it for what it's worth, which to me is probably a lot if you've been listening to this show. If you save, if we saved you $500, it's worth $500. Exactly. <laughs> all righty. Well. Oh, wrong, wrong theme. That's okay. I like it. Let's play it out. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that one. Okay. We're going to take a break and we're going to answer your questions. Get them in the chat room right now here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. We'll be right back. This is Ariana Ratner and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Headphones for VoiceOver? Why not get the headphones made for VoiceOver? That's why I use Harlan Hogan's Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 from voiceoveressentials.com. Harlan's cans are incredibly strong and lightweight. At only 8.4 ounces, the combination straight coiled audio cable stretches from 5 to 10 feet. 
It comes with two gold-plated mini plugs and a studio standard quarter-inch screw-on adapter and includes the new mini jack on the left headphone for easy cord replacement. The studio monitoring headphones are optimized for voice work. Now even better, the Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Over Headphones 2.0. And for a limited time, when you buy the headphones, you'll also get a free autographed copy of Harlan's best-selling book, VO, Tales and Techniques of a Voiceover Actor, 2nd Edition. It's full of stories from the trenches and insights about making the most of your voiceover career. Go on over to VoiceOver Essentials right now and order yours. Hey, everybody. It's time to talk Source Connect. And that's made by Source Elements, our sponsors for the show. And it's an incredible tool set. I mean, it is really what is the, really the predominant tool for remote recording of voice talent from their home studios by commercial studios and oftentimes for bigger budget commercial jobs around the world. Um, and it's because of the workflow. It's one of the key reasons. There are definitely other softwares and tools and utilities out there that allow connectivity between the talent and the studio in high quality audio. But the workflow is so seamless for the production. That's why they love it. The audio goes right into Pro Tools and can also be immediately replaced with the original raw audio right off your computer all seamlessly. It is really amazing. So you want to make sure you have a studio ready for it. So if you're not sure about that, Definitely get in touch with Dan or I. We will evaluate your audio and let you know where you stand. But if your quality is up to up to par and you're getting representation and they're saying time for Source Connect, go get it. Don't hesitate. And there's great support. They will help you through the process. Just go over to source-elements.com and sign up for a subscription and get yourself rolling. You'll, you will not regret it. Thanks, Source Elements. We'll be back to answer your questions right after this. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And All we're right. Back. We're back. I've been playing with the, you know, the button that I voice, so I, you know, the wife's in here and she wants to listen. I can hit that and she can hear the monitors. And Oh, that's true. Yeah, yours does the special mute monitor dance. That's right. But we waste time here because we have a <laughs> pile, a pile of questions. George and I love this. It's time for a lightning round. Let's get it in here. I love what, it. You're, yes. Let's start off with Ann Grist. Go for it. Hey there, Ann. Um, she asks, how do you favor vocal booth? from vocalbooth.com and she says dan i love your eyes there is marcy still in the room watch she's out not. she's gone um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um you know i i want to be careful because i have not installed or heard a recent model vocal booth something in the last four or five years I will just from past experience i found their booths a little more difficult to assemble than a lot of the other ones and acoustically, I didn't, I wasn't happy with it. They were using, you know, foam. I call it foam wallpaper. <laughs> it was <laughs> foam it wallpaper. Just, you know, two inches of egg crate right. foam glued to the walls, you know, and uh, acoustically just never was great. We all would always have to modify it to make it usable. Um, so that was my take. I, I do remember, though, one of them I set up or heard at least set up had amazingly good ventilation, like really quiet. 
like it had six inch ducts, which nobody does in a portable booth. And it had the best ventilation I'd ever heard at that point. So, or it didn't hear. Or didn't hear. Yeah. No, I was like, is it on? And I asked the client. She, was, she said, yeah, it's on. I was like, wow. So yeah, they're, they're certainly not all bad. It's just that those are the pros and the cons of that, of that particular brand of booth. So yeah, I, I would, I want to not judge because again, I haven't heard any very current or installed anything currently to, to know what they're like these days. Yeah. To, to me, it was, it's a matter of the technology. When you look at all the, the booth manufacturers, they're all pretty much the same, except maybe Studio Bricks, which does things very, very differently Yes, in the way their, their mm-hmm. booths are. Are they all soundproof? If they can reduce your exterior noise by 10 to 12 dB, they may actually do what you need them to do, which is mm-hmm. filter out some of that noise that is really hard to eliminate in a home studio. So, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. they probably do not matter. Uh, Fred North asks, hi, Fred, how you doing? Have you got any good ideas for isolating my mic boom from my desk? Well, that's not hard. Mine's on my desk. <laughs> Mine's not. Mine is attached to the Oops. wall. I probably just woke up my, my poor girlfriend. I was <laughs> shaking my desk and it was banging against the wall. Oh, Sorry, gosh. honey. Um, yeah, no, it's, it, it definitely is better to have it on the wall. There's no doubt if you want to isolate it from your desk noise. Yeah. Or on the floor. I mean, I generally insist that people use a microphone stand that is floor mounted Mm -hmm. uh, and isolate it completely from the desk. Now, I don't, it may not be as critical as it used to be because most computers now are getting pretty fanless, especially Macs. And there's, and they they don't have mechanical hard drives. Yeah, they're much, much quieter than they used to be. They're much quieter, in which case you can probably get away with a a desk, you know, a desk mounted, uh, you know, arm that's, you know, like, like this one that i have been i have been yeah mine's mine's on my desk and uh between the shock mount here and and i mean if i'm if i was literally doing a line of a script i would not be touching my desk like i wouldn't be typing or anything right um so i can't imagine it being that big of an issue these days but um yeah, it depends on the situation, Fred. Like what you're trying to accomplish by having your mic. Um, what 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 noise is your mic picking up? I should guess right. I should say. And and the only way to know that is to listen, and mm-hmm. we can then determine. Okay, maybe you should mount it to the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they and they make the brackets to do that, which makes it a lot easier. And that's why I have mine mounted to the wall. I have a, and not to my desk. I have another distinct reason why I don't mount it to the wall, and that's because I want to be able to do this. <laughs> you, you, you mean this and this? I want I want the mic, the monitors, my lights, everything to go up and down at the same time. So that's another reason why I have mine on 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 the arm. So oh, okay. Well, now uh, now on I the understand. Desk. Yeah, yeah. All right. You get Jeff's question. All right, hey Jeff. Um, I seem to have more mouth noise than the average person. I don't know if you would know that for sure, Jeff. How would yep. you know that? Um, despite trying to deal with it at the source, would a dynamic mic like an RE20 pick up less mouth noise? I don't know because, you know, like a dynamic mic like an RE20 has to be pretty close. Yep. And the closer the mic, the better it will pick up the mouth noise. Um, also, the better, the, the more the mic is pointing into your mouth, this versus. You know, as you get back to the side of the microphone, it picks up less and less of the mouth noise. So it's just mouth noise is, oh, sorry, don't touch the mic. Uh, Mouth noise is a mechanical thing, right? It doesn't matter whether you're yelling or whispering, the sound of mouth noise is the same volume. So it's all relative. Good point. To how loud you're performing. So if you're doing louder roles or animation in games, Mouth noise is probably absolutely not an issue. <laughs> if you're yeah. doing commercials and things with a darker, quieter delivery, we're using more gain and everything. Mouth noise is going to be really prominent. Absolutely, you know, and and yeah, I'm of the opinion of if you got mouth noise, deal with the mouth noise, not with the microphone, because there are lots of solutions to it, and you know, including my favorite, which is alcohol, mm-hmm. which works great, Jeff. Mm-hmm. I'll be happy to lend you some, and then you can. You do that mix. You you do a mix with water. I do a mix with a little spray bottle, and 
10 spritzes, spit it mm-hmm. out, and mouth noises are gone. That's cool. That, yeah, that that's a good way to do it. Yeah, it's and I don't think it I don't think there's a mic I can I don't think there's a mic I can recommend for, recommend for voiceover that will eliminate the mouth noise. If it eliminates the mouth noise, then I don't I wouldn't recommend it for voiceover. <laughs> Good point. Because it wouldn't be very clear, clean, open sounding mic. It'd be very dull. Yeah, really. Uh, Grace Newton's got a great question, which is enough to fill an hour. I, I mean, <laughs> I've done in, the show? you and I have done bo- entire webinars on this subject. Yeah. But she says, uh, any advice on gear for travel? <laughs> like, do, well, one, either don't travel and don't do it when you're traveling. Uh, is it necessary for my travel rig to be as sophisticated? Is my booth gear like a Scarlet Solo Gen Three Rode NT One? No, it doesn't need to be that sophisticated. If, uh, if you're literally doing jobs from the road, it's got to be good. Yeah, but if you're trying to just get those auditions in any way you can, you know, kind of like getting in your steps, got to get in those auditions. <laughs> then you don't need something as sophisticated or bulky or. Right. You know, yeah. that's why the, the Apogee mic is a great road mic. Apogee yeah. mic or the one that you have, the road video mic go to. Oh, that, you mean, have, I mean. Have you had, have you had, have you had much of a chance to experiment with that on the road yet? Uh, no. Well, I mean, I've, re- we've recorded video with it and it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's really good. It's a hundred dollar I mean, mic. Yeah. You can spend an extra 30 bucks for its special lightning cable. If you really want to record into a phone. But it comes with the USB cable, right? Uh, well, no, it's 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 strictly a it's a lightning cable. It's designed to work with a, with an iPhone. But it has different cables that you can plug into it. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it. Well, it's got a USB C on one end, right? And the lightning cable, but it's not a, like a charging cable. It's there's something different about it, and they yes. make it proprietary, and that's MFI but, made for iPhone or whatever right. it is. Right. But but uh, yeah, they have a you can plug it into a regular computer or a, or a camera input or whatever, and. Uh, Exactly. I've never heard of that being, I've never heard a bad thing come out of that. No, it, sound, it sounds pretty good. There were some people at Mavo last week that were talking, to, a number of people were talking about the MV88, which plugs right into your iPhone. That's and, one of those little mini stubby ones, right? Right. It's it a stereo I- XY. Right. right. You know, I mean, if you take your iPhone and just go into your car and just talk to it like this, and they know, and if it's just an audition, you can usually get away with it. Uh, I, I think the obsession with, you know, amazing audio quality on the road, unless you are under contract and you got to get stuff out or you got to do remote sessions on the road. Yeah, you got to have good stuff. But that's one half of one percent of everybody doing voiceover. Yeah, that's, that's the, the that's the MV80. I forgot. That's the one. It looks like a little itty bitty. It's not a shotgun mic, but I, I guess people think of it that way because it's round and cute. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but you can you can adjust the direction on it so it's yeah. it's a nice little mic to have and like i said you can be in your car or in a pillow fort or something along those lines and the audio quality for an audition would be pretty good and if you're really good and you really understand your environment you can get away with a one-off something you know uh promo with an or, iphone mic yeah with an i with an iphone so uh i you know too many people are, are obsessing about this stuff because they, they travel a lot. I'd say if you're traveling, you you cannot continue a program a project you were working on in the studio. Like audiobooks, you can't have a road rig and, and a home rig. It's just you can't do it. Uh or if you're doing any long format narration, you can't do it. Uh, I mean, unless you're doing the entire thing while you're on the road. And I, I can't see doing an entire medical narration from, you know, the passenger seat of your car. <laughs> it gets warm in there after a while. Oh, my gosh. And and why are you traveling? Why are you on the road? Why is it so important that you got to do this as opposed to what it is you're on the road for? Right. But that's just me. And I'm that's sure your own business going, decision to make. <laughs> exactly. You get the next one from JHB. Hey, J. Horace. Um, great to see you guys. Where does the Sennheiser MK4, or where does it fit, I guess, into the ranking of mics? How does it fare in your opinion? Um, since it is made by a company that makes higher end mics, how does it compare with like a Sennheiser 416? So he's talking about the Sennheiser MK4. I, I look at that MK4 as sort of like a, a junior or affordable TLM 103. 
Um, I don't think they're dramatically different from each other sound wise. Um, they have similar specs. Um, they're, you know, they have a lot of similarities. I don't think Neumann would like that comparison very much, but <laughs> well, let's, it's a Sennheiser. Anyway, yeah. They're made the by the guys. same parent company and I think they have a lot of, com a lot of similarities. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a very good mic. Um, nothing wrong with it at all. Very straightforward. It's sort of like a road NT one, no bells and whistles, no frills, just a good sounding condenser, uh, mic. So yeah, yeah, that's where you have. Did we, we tested it once. We, we did I'm a mic sure. shoot several years ago. Yeah, that famous mic shootout we did in your, in your studio many years ago. Yeah. Uh, we, that was one of them in the comparison. It, it didn't really shine or stand out. It, as a it had a very flat response as I recall. It, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't boosted on the low end. It wasn't boosted on the high end. It wasn't it just, hyped up and shiny it, it, and crispy. No, which, which is fine because if you yeah. got a nice flat sounding mic, it gives an engineer, or if you know how to manipulate, you know, and, and enhance the audio from a very flat mic, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. But an engineer on the other end is going to like it even more because he can do anything he wants with it. That's right. And you don't necessarily want to do that, especially if you don't know what it is you're doing with it. Right. So uh, I think that's, that's pretty important. I think there's a lot of people who are really relying on lots of sophisticated technology and it's not really necessary. Uh, yeah. But but the MK4, you know, I mean, it, it, how much does that retail? What is it, like 450 it's something like that? dollars mic, yeah, something yeah. like that. I, it, it, great mic. I know people who've used it. They book work with it. But then again, it's not the mic that books work. It's what goes on between your ears, down to your lungs, and out your mouth. Mm -hmm. it's, as, it's as simple as that. As long as the mic is bad or is not bad and it's interfering or it is distracting the listener from your performance any mic is probably fine as long as it's a studio condenser mic over 150 dollars <laughs> just my little yeah. disclaimer there at the bottom yeah i think blue came out with a 99 dollars studio condenser recently i i don't know if i've heard it yet but it could be pretty good i don't know um Moving on. Jim McNicholas, you got yeah. this one. Uh, have you heard the CAD Tryon 7000 <laughs> ribbon mic? <laughs> I know Dan likes some ribbons, but that's a new ribbon. Yeah, um, I yeah. just used one in a session. It handled my low end great, he says. So ribbon mics are known to handle low end and mid range yeah. and the whole spectrum beautifully, like very, very accurately. Yeah, the new ones do. The old ones... They are very nuanced and they hum. They pick uh, up. Yeah. They're, 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 they're sensitive to RFI or, or MFI all, all or whatever. All sorts of stuff. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, even there's nowhere, no, you know, it, it's, it might be your, your, your screen. It could be your computer. I, I don't know, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, I've got a great collection of ribbon mics here. Mm -hmm. I haven't used them much lately. You know, it's like, I need to play. I'm going to grab a ribbon mic and let me see what I can do with this. And, it's a uh, very different animal, but you know the the yeah the CAD Tryon seven thousand. It's it it has a ball top to it, and it's um yeah it, it's not what I would call one of those really sophisticated ribbon mics like um uh what's his name that makes the the ribbon mics uh, well Sheps or um what's the other brand that made, well or a, a Bang and Olufsen or one of those those other um, other mics. Royer. God, we were Royer, over, over yes. at Mike, you know, the uh, Royer mics, which are excellent. Uh, and they ain't cheap, but they're very good. There's the CAD Tryon. This, is the definitely, right. the this would definitely the fall into the uh, budget ribbon mic category. I don't know yeah. if there's too many great budget ribbon mics. No. I can't say for sure. But hey, if it worked on your voice and you liked the recording and you got paid to record on that mic, Go for Can't it. Can't be that bad. Right. <laughs> like I said, if, if I have, I will also drag out my ribbon mic if I have to do like, you know, December 7th, 1941, I will drag it out for that. But yeah, an old, know, an old ribbon mic. Has to do that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, uh, two, what and are then, you using, George? Well, this, this is an Austrian audio OC 818. It falls into the 
expense of mic category because it's over a thousand dollars. Um, it's a multi-pattern mic. It's got um, a lot of customization. It's got four different high-pass filter settings, um, and it obviously sounds good. I'm using processing because I'm doing a live radio show, what we call VOBS. But if I <laughs> turn it all off, that is the raw sound right off the mic. Now, absolutely no sounds, processing at all. Sounds great. Doesn't really need much. Doesn't really need it. It uh, really doesn't. For me, is a, it's it's an it's like a lift in the shoe. The processing, right. you know, it just makes me feel a little more confident. But at the end of the day, don't really need it with the right mic and a good acoustically tuned room. And uh, this one, this one definitely, it's fantastic. I it's, I really, <laughs> really love it. And I'll be very straight when I tell you this: I didn't buy this mic. <laughs> I would never have bought. A twelve hundred dollar mic for what I do. It was a. And, was and how a, did you obtain that? <laughs> it, it. They are a sponsor of the Pro Audio Suite podcast. Ah, okay. So that's how I have that mic. So grain of salt. Disclaimer made. But it well, it, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> it and, sounds pretty and, good. And 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 it's uh, and it makes you sound great. Well, it makes you sound like you because you already it makes sound, you sound like you. Because, I hope I sound that, good. No, you don't sound like me. You sound like you. Yeah, and you have a mic at your end that you need to put up soon. You're still using that your home built mic, but you have a Mojave mic. I think I used that, that last on our last show. I oh, the MA50. Yeah, no, maybe not. No, all right, it's sitting in a box here. All right, next, next week show, I will I promise will use that. put it I up on your stand. It. We want to hear it. Right with with no, your I, voice. I, I I played with it. I did some auditions with it. I actually did actually did a. a uh, something my voice that was heard in times square with that so <laughs> no big, way it's a cool. big event in times square and i got awesome. to announce for that and i and i used i used that mic for that so it, i awesome. did could have put it to good use and they loved it so it's obviously a good mic but we'll promise to bring it on the show next week whoever i guess it's going to be all right last, last question, question here that's there i'm although i'm sure we could talk about a billion other things uh, Jeanette Robbins asks, uh, the Mac Air M2, <laughs> does Apple run Cyber Monday sales? Uh, I was advised to mm -hmm. only buy a Mac directly from Apple because of future service and possible upgrade needs. So I was wondering if Apple offers Cyber Monday sales. I've never mm -hmm. heard of them do that. Have you? I don't think they do, but here's the, disc here, well, here's the clarification. It doesn't matter where you buy the Apple product from. If it is within warranty, period, the warranty is the the warranty is uh, stuck to the hardware, right? So th they don't care who owns it. It's one hundred percent transferable. So you could buy it from any vendor. Best Buy. Um, I heard I heard there's a pretty decent discount at Micro Center. I think you have to show up in person. <laughs> so okay. if you don't have a Micro Center in your neighborhood, forget it. Um, but um, yeah, there's very few real true discounts available, but you know, check apple.com, check apple.com refurb, refurbished department. It's at the very bottom of the website. Look for clearance and refurbished. And you can probably save 10 to 15%, maybe more. And it's going to be fully certified with a full one year warranty, you know, and um, not a bad idea. It's a good, it's, it's actually my preferred way to save money on an Apple product is just buying it refurbished. Yeah. It's never let me down. For example, now we were talking, I was at Mavo last weekend and I had, I, I, I have my, I brought my projector with me. They're like, you know, they're like, you know, if you can bring your own projector, that would be great. Cause they didn't, and the projectors they had were the hotel's projectors. So it means they were kind of, yeah, they, they were okay. If you've ever seen the projector I have, it's got like 10,000 lumens or something like that. It would, you know, blind you at a at hundred paces. Um, so I brought my own. There's only one problem with my projector it only takes a vga input oh yeah and, yeah and that's mine video. too mine too fortunately the old vobs 2014 macbook pro has a dvi input er, output on it that i have a dvi to vga and you had the adapter and i had the adapter Nailed and it. i used that and of course it, everything worked so i actually took two computers with me to to Washington, my my air and Good the old you. MacBook Pro. That workhorse just just 
keeps on going. I thought the battery was dead on it. Nope. It's still yeah. kicking and it still works. And uh, it's a big, hot, heavy beast, but it still runs great. Yeah, it did make my suitcase a little top heavy, but that, that <laughs> that's okay, you know, and, that, and that's the way I like it. But you can have a 2014 Mac. You don't have to have a brand new 2022 Mac if you want to go Mac. I would actually, and George is right, if you can get a refurbished one, get a used one, they're a lot cheaper, and, and that's, uh, you know, you have a graphic you're going to show us, a refurbished Mac. Here is a, this is one I would get if you're on a real budget. Here's a 20, uh, here's an M1. For eight fifty, pay one hundred fifty bucks for an M1 Mac Mini. Do you need an M2 Mac Mini? No, you don't. Do you want to have the newest and greatest of everything? Fine, of course. But you don't. You don't need <laughs> you it. Don't need it. <laughs> I've used both. My friend had an M2 that was just visiting. The M1. My my computer did everything his did. You know, maybe slightly slower, but that would be a hard. You'd be hard pressed to know. And again, this is the apple.com slash shop slash refurbished page on their site it's not something they feature but it's at the bottom of the website and you can browse their stuff here and you can see there's some decent prices um, and some deals you're not going to save big big money but apples don't need big discounts that's that's why they're almost never on sale right and so. you plug it in and it works and that's the most important thing you know Again, there were a lot of people with PCs in my thing this weekend. Mm -hmm. And, of course, 99% of problems, it does this, it does that. I'm having a problem. Mac or PC, almost always PC. Go yeah. Mac, you'll never go back. It's, yeah, you know, for audio, it is an absolute no-brainer. Absolutely. All righty. Well, thanks for all your questions, guys. That was, that was great. And because it makes George and I talk about what we like to talk about, which is your questions. <laughs> and we'll we'll have more questions next week and another great guest next week but we're going to take a quick break right now and we'll be right back and then we will say goodbye for now but stay tuned we'll be right back on voice over body shop hi this is bill farmer and you are watching voice over body shop it's great <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is VoiceOverExtra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. And nice, what? nice ad. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, that was Jim. Jim uh, uh, Mr. Keeney did that one for John Keeney. Yeah, Mr. no, fantastic. That is great, great, great production. Yeah. Next week on this very show, I forgot Johnny Heller will be joining us. 
Oh, ago. right on. Yeah. I had a, had a great time with him this weekend too. He's, he's cool. a super guy, uh, but he'll yeah. be joining us on the 28th and will be with us all week on uh, that particular show. And then we'll have tech talk number 91. And then Fantastic. I think a couple of other people said they're going to be on the show. I couldn't, I forget that Johnny was going to be on. Cool. Cool. Anyway, who are our donors this week? We have Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Shelley Avellino, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Kahn, 949 Design, Lee Penny, yeah. Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, and Sandra, Sandra Man Miller. Miller. Boy, thanks guys for your donations. And it, because it helps us maintain the technical magnificence that this show is, um, and, uh, in more ways than one. Uh, so it keeps you around too. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's part, part of the that's reason. really important. It, it is. That's, that's what I meant. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, you can donate to the show by, by going over to our website, uh, vobs.tv and right in there, you will have a button that says donate. And we'll be happy to take your donation and show your appreciation for all the free information we keep giving you week after week after week after week. Uh, hey, if you need your home studio uh, serviced or you don't know what you're doing with your home studio and you want experts to help you out, you can go over to my website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, all my services are there. And you can also talk to George. And if he's not there, generally I get called anyway. <laughs> Especially so, on weekends. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's right. We have an on-demand hotline for tech support. If you're in a real bind, you can call that number. And uh, for a fee, obviously, you can be patched through to a series of technicians we have. Dan is on that list, so you might end up with Dan. And, um, you can and do worse. <laughs> absolutely, of course. I shouldn't, they made that sound lousy. You might end up with Dan. <laughs> no, Dan might pick up your phone and, and walk you through your tech issue. Um, but if you just want regular scheduled support or sound checks, go to georgethe.tech. Go to georgethe.tech slash webinars if you want to check out my next webinar that's coming up on Adobe Audition, the advanced course, November 30th. Get a VOBS Fan 10 coupon code. Put that in. And get ten percent off. Ten percent off, and check out my Ask Me Anything on Clubhouse, November 29th at three p.m. That's open for anybody. Just me asking, answering questions, kind of like well, I do here on this show. Yeah, which we love doing. Uh, we need to thank our amazing sponsors who've been with us for a long time because they know we're talking to the right people, like. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. Voice Actor Websites. And, and world-voices.org. World the Industry Association of Home uh, VoiceOver Studio Actors. Voice Actors. We are freelance voice actors. It's our industry association. Time for a brain fart. Join anyway. Me. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman for doing a fabulous job in the chat room tonight. Mm -hmm. Sue Merlino for getting it done and, and giving us funny looks that you can't see. And Lee Penny just for being Lee Penny. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. No, that's not till next week. Yeah, but it is next week. Oh, but we'll have a show next week. I can't even keep track. <laughs> All right, all right, let is me it, look at the calendar. Is it ever too early to wish you a happy Thanksgiving? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Have a good one. <laughs>